Conducting a Wi-Fi survey can be an easy task with the right preparation and tools. In this video, we're going to go through what goes into preparing to use NetAlly's AirMapper tool to conduct a Wi-Fi site survey. Hello, I'm Mike Panaki, and in this video, I'm going to take you through those things that industry experts have found will help you best prepare to conduct a Wi-Fi site survey. As with any process, it is important you note know what works best for you as you conduct each site survey. Use these notes to modify your process in an effort to be prepared and generate the best results each time. The information presented here should be viewed as a starting point, not as an end-all way to prepare for your wireless site surveys. You'll find that a successful site survey involves not only having the correct equipment, it also involves having the correct information going into the survey. With both of these in place, you'll find that your surveys will go quickly and yield the desired results the first time. The first and most important thing to have is a floor plan of the facility where you're conducting the site survey. Ideally, you want a CAD drawing of the building that shows as much detail as possible. This is not always available. I've found that most commercial buildings have a floor plan posted showing the fire escape plan. A quick picture of this will oftentimes work just fine. If this isn't available, you can always sketch out a quick drawing on a piece of paper. For outdoor surveys, I will often take a screenshot of Google Maps and save that to a file. This image can then be imported into AirMapper for the site survey. The key is that we have something that can be used to map the wireless network measurements performed to a physical location on the site. The AirMapper application accepts both JPEG and PNG file formats. So regardless of where you get the floor plan, it's gonna to need to be in one of these formats to import it into the application. In addition to the floor plan, you'll need the dimensions of a portion of the floor plan for calibrating the survey, typically between two points that are easy to identify and measure. This will be entered when you import the floor plan into AirMapper. Your survey will only be as accurate as the dimensions you enter, so it's best to make sure they're right. For indoor surveys, I use a laser measuring device to measure distances. These are inexpensive and provide an easy and accurate way to measure distances. For outdoor surveys, you can use the measurement tools available in applications such as Google Maps to measure the distance. Next on the list is physical access to the facility. I know it sounds obvious, but it's important you make sure you have access to all the areas that will need to be surveyed. This access may include keys, key cards, permission, and availability. There have been several times where I haven't been able to get into a conference room or office because it was occupied during the time I was doing the survey. The good news is, within Link Live, you're able to merge surveys together. You may find that after you finish the majority of the survey, you're able to come back another day and get access to those areas you couldn't access the first time. If the same floor plan and calibration is used for both surveys, you can merge them together into a single survey. Before you start the survey, it's a good idea to walk through the facility. This will give you an opportunity to identify any areas that may be difficult to access and provide a good overview of the space. One of the parameters you'll need when setting up the survey is signal propagation. This is the distance from the collection point where AirMapper estimates the RF signal quality. The correct signal propagation setting is based on the type of environment you're surveying. For example, if you're in an office space or hotel, you might want to use a signal propagation radius of 10 feet or less. This means that the signal is expected to be the same within 10 feet of where the measurement was taken. If the floor plan is complex, with many elements such as cubicles, inventory racks, file cabinets, hallways, and closed offices and such, then you may need a smaller radius. For outdoor surveys in open areas, this distance may increase significantly, since there are few obstructions to attenuate the signal. The smaller the signal propagation distance, the more measurements you'll be taking. That means surveying will take longer, but the resolution of the survey 
will have much more detail. It's best to agree upon the signal propagation with the customer or other key parties prior to beginning the survey. This is one of those parameters that should not be changed after the survey is complete. There are a few other items that are handy to have with you when conducting a Wi-Fi survey. These include a power pack. If the survey is going to take some time, it's nice to be able to use a power pack to recharge the AirCheck G2 or the Etherscope NXG. Check the description of this video for a link to a list of recommended power packs. A reflective vest. In many cases, you'll be walking around an active facility looking down at the screen. It's important that others can see you. Hard hat and safety glasses. Oftentimes, Wi-Fi networks are deployed in manufacturing facilities or warehouses where this protective equipment is required to enter the facility. A backpack for your extra batteries, measuring devices, some water, and anything else you might need while conducting the survey. You don't want to stop in the middle of the survey to retrieve these items. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is a good starting point. As you conduct Wi-Fi surveys, figure out what works best for you and adjust your process. You'll find that success favors the prepared. Having everything in place before you begin the survey will reduce the time it takes to complete and yield the most accurate results. This will also reduce the likelihood you'll need to redo the survey as a result of an incorrect setting at the beginning of the project. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Be sure to check out our other videos on using AirMapper to perform Wi-Fi site surveys.